Aleluya. So once we cleanse our hands, once we come into agreement with God, once we come into agreement with Him, once we come into agreement with God, we experience and encounter His power. We experience and encounter His power through repentance. There's great power in your ability, our ability to recognize the fact that we've missed the mark and come into agreement with God's will for our lives. So James, he says, let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. When we humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord, we have been given the promise that God will lift you up. God will lift you and I up when we humble ourselves in his sight. In the book of Galatians chapter number five, verses number 16 through 18, this is what it says. I say then, walk in the spirit, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. If you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. So as, we, as I looked at this scripture, the Lord began to speak to me. And the Lord began to reveal to me that in order for you and I to be led by the Holy Spirit, we must humble ourselves. We must be humble and broken before the Lord. When we are led by the Holy Spirit, we literally position ourselves to receive supernatural infusion of the presence of God. When we humble ourselves under God's mighty hand, when we submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, when we're led by the Holy Spirit, we are positioning ourselves to receive the power of God, to receive the presence of God to be infused with the presence and power of God. That's what happens when we submit to him. There is great power in submission. There is great power in submission. Submission is not a bad thing. I understand that the principle of submission has been abused and misused through time, but I've come to declare to you that from a biblical perspective, from a biblical scope and context, that submission is a good thing when it's applied in its appropriate context. Submitting to God is beneficial to you and I. Submitting to God does not mean that we are entering into this place of you know uh, of a of a, of a slave-like relationship that has a negative connotation no submitting to God is an honor it's an honor to submit to the king of kings it's an honor to submit to the lord of lords it's an honor to submit to the one who died for you and I it's an honor to submit to our deliverer it's an honor to submit to our great redeemer when we do this our lives are infused with his presence what does that word infuse mean the word infuse means to cause to be permeated with something. It means to fill or pervade. It means to fill or pervade. It means to cause to be filled with something or to fill or to pervade. So when our lives are infused with the presence of God, the presence of God is literally permeating every aspect of our lives. It's literally permeating every facet of our lives. So every area of our lives is filled and permeated with the presence of God. When we accomplish this, we begin to walk in great power. We begin to walk in great measures and demonstrations of power and authority. We even begin to live life in a way to where we are bearing the fruit of the Spirit. We begin to live life in a way to where when people encounter us they encounter the presence of God and the character of Jesus Christ God wants the world to encounter the character and the personification of Jesus Christ the only way that that can happen is through us we are the church we are the body of Christ. We are the ecclesia. We are the called out ones. We are the ones who have been given the authority to enact and legislate the kingdom of God in the earth. We are Christ's representatives in the earth. We are members of the flesh, bones, and body of Jesus Christ. So the world needs to encounter the essence, nature, magnitude, and likeness of Jesus Christ when they encounter believers. In order for this to be accomplished, we have to prostrate ourselves before the Lord. We have to prostrate ourselves before the Lord. What does it mean to prostrate? The word prostrate, prostrate, it means to lay oneself flat on the ground face down, especially in reverence or submission. So the word prostrate, it means to lay oneself flat on the ground, face down, especially in reverence or submission. You know, in ancient times and even in different cultures, you know, there as a, as a means of worship, the, 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 
the practitioners or the participants or those that believe in certain faiths, they would begin to to embrace this position. They would begin to to prostrate themselves before you know their God. In in this context, as it relates to believers, I want to address the heart of the matter. I want to address the heart of the matter because as believers, we have to have a, a heart's posture that is prostrated before the Lord. As believers, we have to make sure that our heart is bowed down and surrender to God. We have to make sure that our minds are bowed down in surrender to God. What good does it do for us to perform the physical act of prostration by laying face downward before the Lord, but our hearts are contrary to the physical demonstration that we're performing publicly? We have to make sure that everything that we do publicly correlates and lines up with our private relationship and fellowship with Jesus Christ. So in order for that to occur, we have to prostrate ourselves before the Lord. There is power in your posture. There is power in your posture. There is power in your posture. When you prostrate yourself before the Lord, it's a powerful posture. The, po the posture of prostration, it leads you into glorious encounters with the King. The power of prostration, it leads you into glorious encounters with God. The power of prostration, it leads you into intimate encounters with God. In the book of, I believe it's uh, Numbers chapter 20, uh, I believe that's when, um, when Moses and Aaron, they went before the Lord. And when Moses and Aaron went before the Lord because they were they were encountering a situation in the wilderness where they did not have a source of water. So they were encountering a natural problem and they needed a divine solution and strategy to resolve this issue. So Moses and Aaron, they go before the Lord and the Bible declares that the glory of the Lord appeared to Moses. Now as we look at that text of scripture, the only thing that we see there is that the glory of the Lord appeared to them as they began you know, to worship, as they appeared before the Lord. But, but as I began to think about this I began to really see the power of posture as they prostrated themselves before the Lord the glory of God began to appear and when the glory of God was made manifest to them they literally encountered the tangible weighty glory of God when they were in the presence of God God began to speak to them and as God spoke to them God began to release the answer to their problem he began to release the solution to their barrenness I've come to proclaim to you that the answer to your barrenness is found in your posture the answer answer and solution to your barrenness is found in your posture. The answer and solution to your problem is found in your posture. When you prostrate yourself before the Lord, you are positioning yourself, you're inclining your ear to hear what God is saying. You're inclining your heart to receive what God wants to pour out and, and infuse you with. So when you posture yourself before the Lord, God begins to work. He begins to open doors. He begins to orchestrate divine solutions on your behalf. He begins begins to straighten out crooked pathways. He begins to provide clarity to situations that were unclear and situations that were filled with chaos. He begins to establish order in every area of your life when you prostrate yourself before him. There is power in your posture. I've come to declare to you that this is a time for you to adjust your posture. You need to adjust your posture in the Lord. You need to make sure that your posture is a posture that is indicative and conducive for you to encounter the glory of God. This is a time where you need to address the issues in your posture. Sometimes your posture, if you have bad posture in the natural sense and aspect, it can lead to physical injuries, aches, pains, and ailments in your body. Well, I've come to tell you that in a spiritual context, the same thing is possible. When we have a bad posture spiritually, we can end up harming ourselves spiritually and, and attracting uncalled for and unwarranted spiritual warfare. Why? Because our posture is not in the place that it needs to be. When our posture is not in the place that it needs to be. We are living life in a place where we are out of alignment with God. When our posture is not in the right place, we are not walking step by step with God. When our posture is in the wrong place, we are not walking in consistent step by step and synchronization with God. We're not walking and living in synchronization with the will of God for our lives. When we do this, we end up doing things, entering into places, making decisions, entering into relationships, entering into covenants that God did not desire for us to enter into. Why? because our posture is off. If our posture is off, it's impossible for us to hear the voice of God. If our posture is off, it's impossible for us to know the will of God. If our posture is off, it's impossible for us to know what God is saying and to see what God is revealing to us. Why? Because our posture is not in the right place. This is the time for you and I to address the issues of our posture. When we address our posture and we prostrate ourselves before the Lord, He releases the outpouring, for there is an outpouring. There is an outpouring. There is an outpouring. 
Come on, just lift your hands right where you are. Lift your hands right where you are. Lift your hands right where you are. So over my candle about cote over my sura mania. Re candle my sever my plico sever be cosi and the laba cote over my cosianda. Re candle my plico command the laba sort over me candle about sura mania. A catella my sort over me plico sever manta plico sianda. Res catever my suit over manta plico catever my cora mania. Escatever my plico sianda la plico to manta plico mania. Sepatella masca terra my sura mania. Res catever my sore. Re candela my suit over my plico ramania. Come on, lift your hands to God right there. God is pouring out. He is releasing the outpouring. Pouring. He's releasing the outpouring. God is releasing the outpouring. The outpouring is being released over your lives. The heavens are opened over you now. In the name of Jesus, come on, lift your hands and receive that. There's a wind that's being released right here and now. God is releasing the wind. He's releasing the wind in your life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, for there is an outpouring. For there is an outpouring. There is an outpouring. God is pouring out water, the water of life in the barren places of your life. God is pouring out the waters of life. He's pouring out the waters of life to extinguish and, and, and quench every place of barrenness in your life. I literally see, I literally see hearts that are barren. I literally see minds that are barren. And as you worship, as you lift your hands to God, God is, is releasing the waters of life to not just fill that void of barrenness but to also infuse you with his life so that you can live and run life with new energy with the second wind with new wind with new vigor with new power with new authority for there is an outpouring there is an outpouring there is an outpouring there is an outpouring come on lift your hands and receive that there is an outpouring there is an outpouring. Father, release your fire upon them, God. In the name of Jesus, fresh fire. Fall fresh upon them, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, release your fire. Let your fire touch them, God. Let your fire rest upon them, God. Let your fire consume and burn and purge anything that's not like you, God. Release your fire, your holy fire, your refining fire, your purifying fire. In the name of Jesus Christ, set them ablaze for you, God, that they would run for you, God. Set them ablaze place for you God that they would run for you God that their hearts would be lit with the flame of fire God in the name of Jesus Christ fill them God fill them God fill them God to overflowing fill them to overflowing fill them to overflowing fill them to overflowing that their vats may overflow in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I bind and rebuke now barrenness and unfruitfulness in the name of Jesus I bind and rebuke now instability in the name of Jesus Christ I bind and rebuke now double mindedness in the name of Jesus Christ father release your power in their lives oh God in the name of Jesus Christ come on just take a moment and receive that right there take a moment and receive that right there listen when we prostrate ourselves before the Lord when we prostrate ourselves before God God will release the times of refreshing and the times of revival in your life I come to proclaim to you that the times of refreshing are hitting your life now I come to proclaim to you that the times of refreshing are hitting your life now you are being refreshed and revitalized by the Spirit of God you are being refreshed by the Spirit of God you are being refreshed by the Spirit of God you are being refreshed by the Spirit of God you are being revived by the Spirit Spirit of God for the times of refreshing and revival are here it's here right now in this moment in time lift your hands and receive the times of refreshing receive the times of refreshing receive the refreshing receive the outpour receive it come on receive it by faith in order for you to receive the blessings of God, you have to activate and exercise your faith. When the word is proclaimed to you, when the prophetic word is proclaimed to you, in order for you to receive and obtain that word, you have to attach your faith to it. When you attach your faith to it, you literally grab a hold of the prophetic word and revelation that has been spoken, declared, and decreed over your life. Your faith activates the prophetic word in your life. Your faith causes the prophetic word to come to pass in your life. So by faith, receive the the word of God by faith receive the word of the Lord and you will be established receive the word of the Lord and you will be established listen when we prostrate ourselves before the go for the Lord when we prostrate ourselves before him God will release fresh revelation fresh revelation that will govern our lives in this season and also in the seasons to come when we prostrate ourselves before the Lord God gives us the promise 
He gives us the promise that he will release fresh revelation that will govern our lives in this season and also the seasons to come. Is there anybody here that needs fresh revelation? Is there anybody here that needs fresh revelation? Fresh revelation of the love of God. Fresh and new, deeper revelation of the love of God. Fresh revelation of the power of God. For the Bible, for Jesus himself said that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you would release fresh revelation into their lives, O God. In the name of Jesus, I pray, God, that you would fill their lives with fresh revelation, God. Fresh revelation of your goodness. Fresh revelation of your love. Fresh revelation of your power. Fresh revelation of your will for them, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, I pray, God, that you would pour out upon them, God. Fresh revelation, God. Fresh revelation, God. May their lives be governed by fresh new revelation of who you are. May their lives be governed by the foundational revelation of who you are in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ for Jesus declared that on this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it what is the rock the rock is the revelation of Jesus Christ father I pray God that you would give us a deeper revelation of who you are give us a deeper revelation of the power that's in your name give us a deeper revelation of who you are God that we would grow deeper in you God that we would grow in deeper intimacy with you God that we would grow in deeper fellowship with you God in the name of Jesus Christ I bind and rebuke now any form of, of spiritual blindness in the name of Jesus Christ be broken by the power of God be dismantled by the hammer of God in the name of Jesus Christ I bind and rebuke any type of veils veils over the eyes of your people that will prevent them from seeing your heart that will prevent them from seeing your will I rebuke it now in the name of Jesus Christ and I declare freedom and absolute victory in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, for there is an outpouring, for there is an outpouring, there is an outpouring. We're living in a time where the wind of God, there is a wind of God that is being released in the spirit. There's a wind of God, there's an outpouring that's being released in the spirit. And the key to receiving this, the key to receiving this is found in our posture. It's found in our posture. Are you willing to prostrate yourself before the Lord? Are you willing to prostrate yourself before him? Come on, just take a moment and just worship God right there. Come on, take a moment and just cry out to him right there. Come on, take a moment and lift your voice to him right there. Come on, lift your voice. There's freedom here. There's freedom here. There's freedom here. There's freedom here. It doesn't matter what you've been dealing with. It doesn't matter what things have been coming against you. There's freedom in the presence of the Lord. There's freedom in the presence of the Lord. There's freedom in the presence of the Lord. Come on, just worship him right there. Come on, just worship him right there. Come on, just, just tell God how much you appreciate him. God, we appreciate your goodness. We appreciate your mercy. We appreciate your loving kindness, God. We appreciate your faithfulness, God, for you are forever faithful, for you are forever true, for there is no one that's like you, God, for you are not like man. It's impossible for you to lie to us, God. Every promise that you have given us shall be fulfilled. Every promise that you've given us, it shall come to pass. God, I thank you for your presence being here even now. I thank you for your presence being here even now. I thank you for your presence being here now, God. I thank you for your presence. Come on, just thank God for his presence. Come on, honor his presence. Honor his presence. Honor his presence. Honor his presence. Come on, honor his presence. Such an awesome God. Such an awesome God. You are. You are such an awesome God. You are, you are such an awesome God, and we worship you, and we honor you, you are awesome God, Lord you're awesome, Lord you're awesome. 
You're such an awesome God. You're such an awesome God. You're such an awesome God. Yes, you are. You're such an awesome God. And we adore you, Lord. We magnify your name. You are worthy, Lord. Oh, you are worthy, Lord. And we honor you. We magnify your name. You are awesome, Lord, yes, you are. You're so awesome, God. You're so awesome, God. You're so awesome, God. The victory belongs to you. You're so awesome, God. We honor and adore you, Lord. Come on, just lift your voice to him right there. We honor and adore you, Lord, yeah. We honor and adore you, Lord, yes. We honor and adore you, Lord God. There's nobody like you, Lord. There's nobody like you, Lord God. There's nobody like you, Lord God. And we honor you. And we honor you, we adore you, Lord, yes, we do. We adore you, Lord, yes, we do. We just want to be in your presence, Lord. We just want to be in your presence, Lord. There's healing in your presence, God. There's healing in your presence, Lord, yeah. There's healing in your presence. There's joy in your presence, God. Receive his love, receive his love. Receive his love, receive his love. Receive his love. Receive his love. He's pouring out his love over you right now. Yes, he is. He's pouring out his love over you. He's pouring out his love over you. Receive his love, receive his love, receive his love, he's pouring out his love. Let your glory cover us, God. 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 I don't want to leave this place with you, yeah. You're such an awesome God. You're such an awesome God. You're such an awesome God. Yes, you are. Come on, just lift your hands. His presence is here. His presence is here. Is there anybody here that needs healing? If you need healing, I want you to type, that's me. I believe God is going to touch you. I believe God is going to heal you. If you need healing, I want you to type, that's me. Come on, if you need healing, I want you to type, that's me. Come on, if you need healing, I want you to type, Father, in Jesus' name, I pray, God, that you would touch, that you would touch Taylor. Father, I pray, God, that even as we're here worshiping now, God, that you would release your healing power upon her. Taylor, just lift your hands. Taylor, lift your hands to God. God's going to begin to touch you. He's going to begin to touch you. He's going to begin to touch you. Father, release your healing power. Release your healing power to touch, heal, and deliver, Taylor, in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind and rebuke every form of physical ailment that's coming against her in the name of Jesus Christ. 
I bind and rebuke every physical sickness that's trying to invade her body in the name of Jesus Christ. I cancel the assignment of the enemy. I bind and rebuke the spirit of infirmity now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray. I pray over, um, who is it? Over Tawera. I declare and decree healing over her now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray, O oh God, that you would release your healing anointing in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, release your healing anointing. Release your healing anointing, that yoke-breaking anointing. I break and dismantle now the yoke of infirmity in the name of Jesus Christ. I break and dismantle now the yoke of infirmity in the name of Jesus Christ. Be broken and dismantled by the hammer of the Lord. Be broken and dismantled by the power of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for Patrice. Father, I declare and decree healing over her hand. Father, I pray, Lord God, that even right now that you would supernaturally touch her hand. Touch her hand with your fire, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare and decree healing. I declare and decree healing over her hand, over her pinky finger. In the name of Jesus Christ, be healed by the power of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, I come against any abnormalities in the healing process as a relationship to her hand father I pray Lord God that every place that was uh, broken every place that was distorted every place where she suffered injury in her hand I declare and decree in Jesus name that healing shall hit her life that healing shall hit her hand and that her hand will come back into alignment with the way that you originally created her body in the name of Jesus Christ may healing be your portion in Jesus mighty name in Jesus name Father, I pray for Tracy. I pray for Tracy, God. I declare and decree healing. I declare and decree healing over her. I declare and decree healing over her children. Healing over her grandchildren. Healing over her, her lineage, her bloodline. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bind and rebuke. I bind and rebuke diabetes in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind and rebuke diabetes and pulmonary disorders in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind and rebuke high blood pressure, uh, hypertension in the name of Jesus Christ I bind and rebuke hypoglycemia in the name of Jesus Christ I declare and decree healing over her family healing over her children healing over her body in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, release your healing fire to touch her life, God. Release your healing fire to touch her children, God. Release your healing fire to touch her family, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bind and rebuke any forms of cancer, any cancerous cells that would seek to invade anybody's body that's viewing this broadcast. Now, I don't know if anybody has dealt with that or if anybody has family members that has dealt with that, but I saw the word cancer. I bind and rebuke cancer of any kind in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare and decree that it shall not be able to kill their lives. It shall not be able to kill their loved ones. It shall not be able to accomplish its agenda in their lives. I bind and rebuke the infirmity of sickness, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind and rebuke cancerous tumors in the name of Jesus Christ. I command them to dissolve and die by the power and the authority of Jesus Christ. I command them to be broken by the authority of Jesus Christ. Father, release your fire. Ramasuta Vramandia. Release your fire, God. Release your fire, God. Patrice. Father, I pray. Patrice, lift your hands. I see God touching you. I see the fire of God touching you and hitting your life right here in this moment in time. Father, I pray, Lord God, that you would release your fire into Patrice's life, oh God, that she would have a tangible encounter with you right here in this moment in time. At 1129 p.m., Father, I declare and decree that the fire of God shall touch her life in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, release your fire upon her. Release your fire upon her. Release your fire upon her. Rasu Vramandia, release your fire upon her. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be filled with the Spirit of God. Be filled with the fire of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Who else needs healing? Patrice, do you feel the presence of the Lord? Do you feel the presence of the Lord? Do you 
feel the presence of the Lord. Father, I pray for Denise Williams. I declare and decree healing over her life in the name of Jesus Christ. Patrice, there's more that the Lord wants to, to infuse you with. Begin to worship God right here in this moment in time. And as you worship the Lord, as you worship the Lord, the presence of God is going to increase in your life. As you worship the Lord, the presence of the Lord, I see like the presence of God amplifying in your life in this moment in time as you're releasing a sound of worship to Him, as you're crying out to Him, as you're calling to Him, as you're calling upon His great and mighty name. The presence of God, the fire of God, the power of God is being amplified and turned up in your life right here in this moment in time. Come on, just take a moment and worship Him. Worship Him and the power of God. You're going to feel a greater manifestation of the power of God. You're going to feel a greater manifestation of the glory of God. I pray for Donna in the name of Jesus. Father, I declare and decree healing over her now in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare and decree healing over every aspect, every part, every fiber of her being in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare and decree that no attack of sickness would be able to infiltrate her immune system. Father, I pray, Lord God, that you would supernaturally strengthen her body. I pray, God, that you would supernaturally strengthen her her immune system in the name of Jesus Christ father I pray Lord God that you would eradicate every form of sickness every form of physical ailments aches and pains that's trying to overtake her body in the name of Jesus Christ I declare and decree healing over her life now in Jesus mighty name I declare and decree that she shall not be bound by the spirit of infirmity I declare and decree that she shall not be bound by sickness I declare and decree that she shall not be bound by disease I declare and decree that Donna is free in the name of Jesus Christ she's free from the power of sickness she's free from the power of infirmity in the name of Jesus Christ be healed by the power of God be healed by the authority of Jesus Christ in Jesus mighty name I see the Lord freeing some of you that's bound. And I don't know exactly what you're bound to, but God is saying that this is the hour of freedom from every form of bondage that's been holding you hostage. This is the hour of freedom from every form of bondage that has been holding you hostage. This is the hour of freedom that, is, that, that, that has come to you now to liberate you and deliver you from things that have been waging war against your identity. Things that have been waging war against your purpose, assignment, and calling in God. God is saying that the hour of freedom is here. This is a moment. This is an, a moment and an opportune time for you to encounter the power of God that will set you free from every form of bondage. I don't know what you're bound to. You don't have to say what you're bound to. That's between you and God. But one thing that I know that when God reveals something, oftentimes he reveals things with the purpose of redemption. Oftentimes he reveals things with the purpose of redeeming someone from the grips and the snares and the enslavement of the enemy. I've come to proclaim to you that you don't have to be bound. You don't have to continue to live life in that repetitive cycle of dysfunction. Freedom is here. Freedom is in the room. Why? Because the great deliverer is here. Freedom is in the room because the presence of God is here. Mm. Nisa Higgins, I want to pray for you. Nisa Higgins, I want to pray for you. Father, I pray in Jesus' name for Nisa Higgins. I pray, Lord God, that you would release and open doors of supernatural provision over her life. Father, I pray, Lord God, that you would open doors of great favor great favor in her life. I declare and decree divine access, access to things that are in direct correlation with the vision, plans, and purposes, and even assignments that you birthed within her, assignments that you place on the inside of her that she has been working hard and, and, and trying her best, you know, to accomplish for your glory. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that every enemy that's coming against her, every enemy that's coming against her purpose, every enemy that's coming against her assignment, I bind you, rebuke you now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray, oh God, that 
you would strengthen her, Lord God, with a fresh wind, with a new grace to continue to run strong, to continue to run strong and not grow weary. Father, I pray, Lord God, that as even in this season of life and beyond this season of life, Father, I pray that you would open the heavens over her, God, where she would be able to continue to produce greater a greater aspect and magnitude of creative expressions that represent you and bring you glory and honor. Nisa Higgins, I see the Lord giving you the capacity to create new forms of creative expressions that will that will bring glory to God and that will also lead people to Christ. Father, I pray that your peace would rest upon her. That your peace would govern her mind, God. Lord, we honor you and bless you. Lord, we magnify you. We give you the glory. You deserve the glory, Lord, yes. You deserve the glory, yeah. You deserve the glory, Lord, God Almighty. You deserve the glory, yes, you do, God. You are our heart's desire. You are our heart's desire, yes. You are our heart's desire. I don't want to leave this place with you, God. God, we honor you. Father, I pray, Lord God, that your grace and your peace and your presence will continue to be with your people, God. I pray, God, that you would continue to cover your people, God. That you would continue to cover us against every form of wickedness, destruction, and calamity. Wicked schemes and plots of the enemy. I pray, Lord God, that provision, divine empowerment will continue to rest with us. Continue to be on the inside of us. That it would enable us and empower us to do good. And to represent you well in the earth. Father, I pray in Jesus' name. And plead the blood of Jesus over every person that's viewing this broadcast. I thank you for the great power that's in your name. I thank you for the great power that's in your blood, God. And I magnify you. We give your name the glory. We give your name the honor and all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. May God's grace and his peace continue to be with you. In Jesus' name.